When you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, and you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. That was Lord Kelvin who said that. Any measurement that you make without the knowledge of its uncertainty is completely meaningless. And that was Professor Walter Lewin, a physics professor at MIT. With those quotes being said, we're going to be taking today's video with a very large grain of salt. As you can see, this is my latest build. It's a light sensor using an Arduino and a BH1750 light sensor. So what is a candle at one meter? There you go. Okay, this light sensor project with the Arduino is a pretty fun project. I'll post the links to, to where I found it and the code and everything. If you're looking for laboratory precision, then you're in the wrong place. However, it does seem to give the results you would expect to see with the different lights and the distances I measured. So what I did, and the reason I, I got this in the first place, was because I was just kind of curious what the growinator was putting out. Now the data sheet had said something around 10,000 lumens, but the driver for the 100 watt LED is actually only putting it out about 65 watts. So I really didn't know. I, I knew it was enough light that I was getting flowers and fruit. But other than that, I was just kind of guessing. Now, one of the shortcomings of this sensor is there's sharp cutoffs in the spectrum where it can pick up these measurements. And that's around the 400 nanometer mark and the 700 nanometer mark in the reds. And I, that's where I can really see the drop off with the red LEDs it, it doesn't really pick them up that well as, as what you might expect so really this is just measuring the intensity which I think most people can understand better anyway when we get into lux and lumens and yield photon flux and par values you know a lot of people the eyes roll in the back of their heads so but most people can understand intensity and that's that's basically what we're trying to, to get at here now, lux is lumens, but meters squared. Okay, so I hung a tape measure with some magnets from the growinator. Got a nice shock from it the other day. And we're just going to see what we're getting at different distances. And again, primarily looking for what the intensity of the white is. So at a foot... We'll see it's topping out at 54,612 lux. And if I just lower it a little bit, you can see it drops down. So that's pretty much what it's running at, even though it's topped out at a foot. So let's drop down to 18 inches. And you see it drops off pretty rapidly. At, let's see if we can get underneath the light. 28, 29. Just under 30, well, there's 30,000 lux at 18 inches. So let's drop down to two feet. Now about 16,000, we'll call it. A little over. And let's drop it down to a meter. And that's kind of what the base is. That's what we're looking for. Okay. It's about 6,300 and change. Oh, climbing. Yeah, right around there. Alright, just got off the phone with the local grow shop in the town next over from here. And they said it was okay. I came in and did some comparison on some of the lights they have set up. Also, they have some aquaponics that 
they've uh, just finished up. They've moved into a new building and, and done a lot of renovating. So I'm kind of curious to see what they have going on. So there's where all the deer have been. Okay, down at Grove Gardening in Beacon, Illinois. Let's go in and check it out. Hey, here's a system that's new to me. It's a Sun System LEC. And it's running about 315 watts is what it's listed at. And we got a nice DWC system set up, except for the uh, brown colored pots uh, apart from it. So let's uh, let's see what kind of flux intensity we're getting down at uh, a meter. Okay, so a meter down, twelve thousand two hundred fifty. No, actually, we're not even directly underneath it. Okay, fifteen thousand a meter. The other thing I noticed about this is there's a fair amount of intensity, even a little ways off to the side. All right, then we have this this metal halide. CFL. This CFL, 125 watt CFL, and we're not going to be able to get down to a meter, but we can kind of compare it to the T8s at home, about 10 inches away. And 18, 19,000 locks. So it's a little more efficient. It's also a little more compact. So obviously it's working. All right, here's a 360 watt metal halide with a grow light OG hood on it. And it's meant to get all a little more focus towards the center here especially it's ideal for a smaller tent like this you can see you got some pretty good growth going so looking down at what it's reading here at a meter getting about 34,000 which the guys here were guessing would be about 30 so pretty close now the the bulb temperature is a little bit cooler than the uh, LEC with this one being at 4100K. And here's the room where the aquaponics are going to go. Still in the early planning phases, so hopefully have an update in a month or so. So the tilapia here. Yeah. Okay, now we have a 500 watt halogen, and we'll put it about a meter. And 2500. So, despite using 10 times more energy than the 50 watt LED, it's light intensity is is minimal but i tell you it's cold out here so i appreciate the wasted energy and heat right now okay for this last light here in this video came in as a bit of a surprise to me at the 6000 lux measurement i was getting now this is only at 10 inches and that's because the light itself is locked into place into some shelves and i wasn't going to take everything apart but the reason I was surprised is because it's just regular everyday T8 bulb shop light. One warm, one cool. It's what I've been using the last four years to start seedlings. And I've got some lettuce and some Swiss chard starting right now. And the lettuce just started popping up. And I really can't recommend another light for doing this sort of thing because 
at 64 watts it's using a relatively low amount of power the plants can grow all the way up into the bulbs and, and not get burnt they'll be just fine and it's just a good all-around light for, for that purpose so if you, if you do want to grow bigger and more complex plants you need the more powerful grow lights though and so it was nice to, to have an excuse to do an Arduino build and also go down and visit the local grow shop in the dead of winter. That's all I got for now. Please like, please subscribe, please comment, and we'll see you next time.